welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Pris, and we are still in quarantine. And I just wanted to give you guys a little tip or a little reminder that this is a perfect time to take care of some of all those little house repairs that you may have either been putting off or forgotten about or maybe don't really know how to do. At this point, the hardware stores are still open. Internet is available. Um, and a lot of these little repairs, at least for me, are pretty cheap and easy to do once you take the time to actually do them. And so I was actually about to replace the screen here. <laughs> this damaged screen, it's been like this for over a year. I've been putting it off, I, you know, making excuses. I don't know how and all that. And I've replaced a couple of other screens and I realized, you know, like, this is so easy. I should do a video, show other people how to do it and remind you to do some of this stuff. Um, it's, it will save you some hassle and it's a really good thing to do while you can because I'm just thinking what if come summertime this lockdown still happening and uh, say there's a power outage which does sometimes happen due to thunderstorms stuff in the storm in the summer. I might want to open some windows and not let it have a bunch of bugs come in. And so let's take care of this now. You only need a couple of tools to do this. Uh, this is one specialty tool. It costs, I think, seven bucks. It's just got a couple of roller ends. I, I want to say it was seven bucks. It was definitely less than ten. Somewhere you could probably find it for five. Um, a razor blade of some sort. You probably already have one. I'm using a screwdriver, but needle nose pliers would work as well. And then I find like maybe some scissors or something to help cut this. Or you could just use the, the knife. And all you have to do is uh, find the corner. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. You also need some screen and uh, this uh, screen spline. Get the appropriate size. So I've got the fiberglass, and this is what they recommended for this type of mesh. So all you have to do is turn it around so you have this, um, so you can see the black spine, spline. All right. Can you see that? Can you see what I'm doing here? All right. So you can use like some needle nose pliers. I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. Probably use a knife, whatever. And you're just pulling the spline out. And once you get it started, it's really easy. It just pulls out just like that. All right, there's the old one. Now, if you're really cheap, or resources are limited, you could probably reuse this, I would imagine. I would probably clean it or whatever and reuse it, but this is really old and these splines aren't very expensive. I'm gonna say it was like five bucks for the package. And see how easy that just came out once the spline was out? And so I'm gonna replace with a new one. Now, just take your mesh and you want to leave a few inches on on your sides so overlap it like that and you actually don't need that much I think the package recommends like three or four inches the first time I did it I actually had a little bit less than that well, quite a bit less than that and it worked just fine and I'm just gonna use these little child safety scissors this stuff cuts super easy which is probably also why it tears so super easy then just place it on there nice don't worry about pulling it real tight because once you put the spline in that'll tighten it up 
and then just pick a corner, any corner. I'll start over here. So this roller has, the, so this side is kind of rounded and this side, I don't know if you can see it, it's, um, was that concave? And so the spline kind of fits in between there. And so that's the side that I like using when I'm mashing it in. And so you basically just pick a corner, lay it in. And I usually kind of start it just with my hands, kind of pushing it in there. Trying to line it up with that, uh, let's see. I don't know how well you guys can see this. There you go. And so I just kind of line it up like that. And then I get that concave side. And press down. When I'm just starting it, I don't try to press it all the way in. I'm just kind of making sure it's lined up properly. And then I go back over it personally. I don't know the best way. I'm not a window person. <laughs> but I found that that worked for me when I did this. So just kind of... Rolling it in. Do, do, do. You don't have to press super hard. I mean, you do got to put some force on it. And so, just kind of pressing it like that and getting it, everything lined up so I kind of get this whole side. And I'm just stretch it out. like this one's going in harder than before. I wonder if I got the right size. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to turn it. Get it going around this side. I do find that the corners are a bit tricky. So I really try to stick them in there. And that's where I might use the screwdriver to help me out a little bit to try to get it in the corner. Really good. To be honest, I think I got the wrong size here. Um, the first round I did, this went, these went in here easier. And then I had to go back and my, buy more splines. And I think I got the wrong size. But, I think it'll work. I don't feel like going back to the store unless I absolutely have to. If I can make this work, I will. Make sure you get the right size flying. But it's going in. It's just taking a bit more effort. And thankfully, I only have a couple more to do, so I'm going to make this work. And once you're happy with it, I just run the razor blade along the edge, the outer edge, not the inner edge. Cut it off nice and neat.
And then we just cut this. Ooh, I'm scratching up my table. Let's tuck that last corner in real good. replaced. It's nice and tight. It only took a few minutes to do. Now you go pop that back in my window and we can open up our windows and have some nice fresh bug free air. So get those quick and easy projects done while you can. You're sitting in the house doing nothing anyway, right? <laughs>